It started as a flicker, a faint signal on a telescope feed from Chile, then another in Arizona, another in Namibia, and one more in Southern Europe. Within hours, the unthinkable became undeniable. Four separate interstellar objects, all inbound, all converging toward the same invisible corridor that 3i Atlas had followed months earlier. At first, astronomers dismissed it as coincidence, a simple data overlap. But when the orbits were aligned, the pattern emerged. Four distinct bodies, each moving from a different quadrant of the sky, were spiraling toward the inner solar system like coordinated dancers following a rhythm no one could hear. Statistically, it was impossible. A one in 50 million chance, maybe worse. Yet there they were, real and closing in fast. And for the first time in history, scientists began to wonder if what we've been calling interstellar visitors were never visitors at all, but scouts. The first object to reveal itself was beautiful, too beautiful. Officially designated C2025P1, astronomers nicknamed it the Green Wanderer. When spectral filters enhanced its faint signature, it glowed with a deep emerald hue, a color caused by diatomic carbon molecules reacting to sunlight. But this one was different. Its luminosity wasn't just strong, it was growing exponentially. As it neared the sun, its light curve climbed far faster than physics allowed, as if it were feeding on energy instead of reflecting it. Its trajectory was long and looping, elegant and precise, falling perfectly within the same narrow orbital corridor traced by 3i Atlas. The comet's core was unusually compact and resilient, dense enough to resist the heat that should have vaporized it long ago. Each day, its glow deepened from mint green to neon, then to a saturated electric hue that cameras struggled to capture. But it wasn't just its color. Instruments picked up faint electromagnetic harmonics emanating from the comet's coma, vibrations in the radio band, pulsing every nine hours, identical to the mysterious energy cycle once detected from 3i Atlas. To the public, it was a celestial wonder. To the scientists watching, it was something else, a beacon awakening. Two days later, a second object appeared, Comet Lemon C-2023. A3, an old traveler once thought lost to the darkness, but this time, it wasn't fading, it was reigniting. Its coma expanded far beyond any prediction, forming a tail nearly 100 million kilometers long, large enough to stretch halfway to Mars. The images were breathtaking, a glowing arc slicing across Virgo, visible to the naked eye. But for researchers, the awe quickly turned to alarm. The comet wasn't following its original orbital path. Minute course corrections appeared in the data, small, precise adjustments that kept it perfectly aligned with the same gravitational corridor as the Green Wanderer. The deviations were too regular to be random. Spectroscopic analysis found elevated sodium and iron levels, far higher than solar heating could produce, suggesting the object was eroding from within, releasing material in controlled bursts, like propulsion. To the world, it was a comet behaving beautifully. To the experts, it looked engineered. The two objects now moved in rhythmic harmony, their emissions rising and falling together every nine hours, a dual heartbeat in the sky. Then came the third, Comet Tsuchinshan Atlas, C-2023. A3, the most mysterious of all, Discovered through overlapping images from Chile and South Africa, it flickered in brightness every few hours, vanishing and reappearing as though breathing. At first, astronomers thought it was fragmenting, a comet breaking apart under solar stress. But high-resolution spectroscopy revealed something unprecedented. The nucleus wasn't splitting chaotically. It was rotating around two distinct heat sources orbiting one another, perfectly synchronized. The twin emissions gave the comet a strange artificial symmetry, its light curve forming a flawless sine wave rising and falling with mathematical precision. Even stranger, radar scans picked up faint radio fluctuations, tiny phase-shifted signals repeating the same nine-hour energy cycle seen in the other objects. To the naked eye, it was magnificent. To the instruments, it was impossible. And as it moved deeper into the solar system, its tail began to bend at fixed geometric angles, as if constrained by invisible magnetic lines. By now, three inbound bodies shared not only a path, but a rhythm, and something unseen was pulling the strings. The fourth object was different. It didn't shine, 
It didn't reflect sunlight, emit gases, or leave a trail. It was invisible, a dark speck discovered not by sight, but by absence. Radar arrays in California and Spain detected a void in their starfield maps, a spot where background light simply disappeared. Further analysis revealed an object roughly 200 meters wide, tumbling through space with near-perfect velocity. It was officially designated 2024 YR4, but researchers quickly gave it another name, the Silent One. Unlike the others, it wasn't a comet. It was solid, metallic, and dense. Its orbit had shifted inexplicably, altered by an unknown force acting from within, not by gravity or solar pressure. Most disturbingly, it pulsed in radar reflectivity every nine hours, the same interval connecting all three comets. Nickel, cobalt, iridium. Its composition read like a blueprint for high-temperature alloys, not natural rock. And as it entered the same invisible corridor that the others shared, every instrument around Earth began to hum with low-frequency static. Something massive was forming across the solar system, a harmonic pattern connecting four distinct travelers, all converging toward the same cosmic destination. When the data from all four objects was combined, a new pattern emerged, a fifth signal. Not from any of the comets or from the silent asteroid, but from somewhere between them. Astronomers called it the fifth echo, a low-frequency pulse that resonated through the deep space radio spectrum every 9 hours and 23 minutes. It didn't align with any of the known orbits, but drifted through the same gravitational corridor that connected them, as if occupying the center of an invisible network. The pulse wasn't random. It carried harmonic overtones, like chords being played across millions of kilometers. When converted into an audio spectrogram, it sounded eerily mechanical. A rising hum followed by a rhythmic silence, repeating endlessly. The deep space network triangulated its source to an empty patch of sky between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, yet nothing was visible there. Some suggested it could be a gravitational resonance effect caused by the object's alignment. Others feared it might be the signature of a fifth body, one too dark to detect. Whatever it was, it acted like a conductor in an orchestra, the unseen center that synchronized them all. As the four luminous objects and the fifth echo aligned, Earth began to feel the consequences. Communication satellites experienced intermittent blackouts, each lasting 9 hours and 23 minutes, exactly matching the pulse cycle. Radio frequencies fluctuated in unison, disrupting everything from GPS navigation to deep space telemetry. In some regions, particularly in the Southern Hemisphere, strange auroral bands appeared in the sky at unexpected latitudes, glowing faintly green even at the equator. The European Space Agency reported a spike in magnetospheric tension, small but measurable shifts in the planet's magnetic field, synchronized perfectly with the pulse frequency. The effect wasn't destructive, but it was pervasive, as though Earth itself was resonating with something cosmic. Amateur astronomers began reporting visible distortions in the night sky. Faint arcs of light connecting the comets like threads, invisible to the eye but revealed in long-exposure photography. Social media exploded with speculation, claiming that we were witnessing the construction of some vast interstellar mechanism. Officially, NASA called it a multi-object gravitational resonance event. Unofficially, they stopped calling it anything at all. By mid-November, the alignment reached its apex. The four visible objects now traced a geometric configuration unlike anything nature had produced before, a near-perfect tetrahedral pattern, with each body positioned at a vertex in the mysterious dark asteroid, the silent one, at its base. The configuration wasn't stable by natural means, yet it held perfectly. The distances between the objects varied no more than a few kilometers despite the gravitational chaos of the inner solar system. The James Webb Space Telescope, operating at maximum range, captured infrared images revealing faint plasma filaments connecting them, streams of charged particles weaving a lattice across millions of kilometers. When processed through false color imaging, the formation resembled a crystalline structure, a cosmic geometry suspended in the void. Scientists called it impossible. The pattern defied gravitational drift, orbital decay, and random chaos. And yet it persisted, held together by something unseen. It's as if the objects are following instructions, one European astrophysicist whispered in a leaked recording. 
instructions written in physics we don't understand. Then, just as the tetrahedral formation stabilized, the fifth echo changed. The once monotone pulse began to shift in frequency, modulating in complex sequences, not random noise, but encoded structure. The transmission extended beyond the usual radio bands, bleeding into the electromagnetic spectrum up to gamma range. Earth's instruments registered faint bursts of radiation that coincided with the pulses, each one arriving 9 hours and 23 minutes apart with increasing intensity. And then came the final shock. The pulse began to respond. When a radio observatory in China transmitted a calibration ping toward the formation, the fifth echo returned the signal. Delayed, inverted, and amplified. It wasn't reflection. It was reply. Within hours, observatories in Chile, South Africa, and Hawaii confirmed the same phenomenon. The formation wasn't just stable, it was interactive. Something out there was listening, and now it had spoken back. For 72 hours after the reply, every major radio telescope on Earth went silent. Not because they lost power, but because the data they were receiving made no sense. The fifth echo had stopped transmitting its simple rhythmic pulse and replaced it with something vastly more complex, an oscillating waveform that shifted through every measurable frequency, like a voice searching for the right tone. It wasn't random, it wasn't cosmic background noise, it was organized. When converted into a spectrogram, the waveform produced a pattern so structured that it resembled language. The shape wasn't linear but recursive, spiraling inward into a series of nested hexagons, identical to the plasma geometry seen connecting the four visible objects. The message wasn't being sent in sound or light. It was being sent in form. At first, scientists assumed it was an artifact, a coincidence created by instrument resonance. But then, the Square Kilometre Array Observatory in Western Australia did something different. They inverted the signal, decoding it backward, and the resulting spectrogram formed something astonishing. Coordinates. Not for a location in space, but for one in time. A timestamp exactly 48 hours into the future. At that precise moment, the formation, the four comets and the silent one, would reach an alignment so geometrically perfect that even the smallest deviation could shatter it. Yet, as the appointed hour approached, the pattern held firm. The tetrahedron compressed slightly, drawing the objects closer, and then, at 3.17 UTC, the fifth echo vanished entirely. What followed was not light, not radiation, but absence. For 12 minutes, every deep space sensor in operation recorded a total void. No photons, no neutrinos, no quantum background. It was as if that region of space had ceased to exist. Then, just as suddenly, the data returned. The formation was still there, but it had changed. One of the four luminous objects, the Green Wanderer, was gone. In its place hung a faint ripple, a distortion in the background light, bending starlight like a gravitational lens. The other three remained perfectly stable. When the data was run through enhanced processing, the ripple pattern revealed something unimaginable, a fractal repetition of the same tetrahedral geometry, but scaled infinitely smaller, embedded inside the distortion itself, as if the object hadn't been destroyed but transformed. That was when the transmission resumed. But this time, it didn't come from the fifth echo's position. It came from Earth's direction. Every antenna facing the formation registered the same reading, a delayed copy of the original human signal sent days earlier, inverted, modified, and returning home. The formation had reflected our own broadcast back to us, but with one addition. Embedded within the signal's carrier wave was a binary sequence repeating endlessly. 10111001. Simple at first glance, but when decoded using spectral line intervals as a key, it translated into a mathematical constant, one that didn't exist in any known natural equation. It was a value representing a ratio between space, frequency, and gravitational curvature, a formula that suggested the presence of a medium within the vacuum itself, a cosmic substrate connecting matter and energy, a lattice of information beneath reality. The implications were staggering. The message wasn't a greeting or a warning. It was a demonstration, a proof that the universe itself could communicate through geometry, that intelligence could exist not in biology or technology, but in structure, in harmony, 
in the resonance of space-time itself. What humanity had witnessed wasn't an arrival, it was an activation. The four objects, 3i Atlas and the unseen fifth center had formed a resonant system, an interstellar array capable of manipulating gravitational frequencies. For the first time, we hadn't just observed the cosmos, it had answered back. In the hours that followed, governments classified the data under Project Orion, shutting down public feeds, sealing archives, and ordering all observatories to stand down for recalibration. But by then, it was too late. Amateur astronomers had already recorded the event, posting raw captures online before they disappeared mysteriously. Among those files was a single frame, faint but clear, showing a thin thread of light stretching between the formation and Earth, as though the two were momentarily connected. Whatever 3i Atlas and its companions are, they are not travelers passing by. They are part of something vast, something that uses physics itself as a language. Maybe they are mapping the solar system. Maybe they are synchronizing with it. Or maybe, just maybe, they've been waiting for us to look up long enough to realize that we were part of the message all along. So if this story made you question what's really moving out there, if you've ever felt that the universe is watching back, don't look away. Subscribe to this channel, because what happens next might not just redefine astronomy, it might redefine existence.